Hello students, welcome to the lecture on specification for equipment, ventilation and kitchen safety and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Define the care and maintenance of kitchen equipment, discuss the kitchen equipment specification, describe the food store, explain the role of a storekeeper and beverage storage facilities, define the beverage storage facilities. Let's start with the concept of specification for equipment ventilation and kitchen safety. Safe design of commercial kitchens to provide the hospitality industry including managers, proprietors, designers and commercial kitchen users with recommendation for implementing efficient, safe and best practice for the hospitality industry. Within each part are precaution, processes and recommendation that contribute to the efficient running of a commercial kitchen. Whether it is for small, medium or large premises, the guidelines can be used when designing new kitchens or renovating existing commercial premises. They present the hospitality industry with standards and recommendations that will contribute to safe and efficient production of uncontaminated food. This leadership provides the information a caterer will need to access whether existing ventilation installation are adequate as well as guiding caterers and building advisors on management as well as design and performance issues specific to caterer. The importance of kitchen ventilation. The health and safety in catering contact committee considers the lack of adequate kitchen ventilation to be a major problem in catering. Based on the extensive experience of kitchen and industry service, around 65% of kitchens may have inadequate ventilation. It considered that adequate ventilation is fundamental to achieving control of health and safety risk in kitchen as well as general hygiene control and food safety. Until now, no suitable guidance has been available. Hence, the committee considered this information sheet to contain some of the most important guidance it has ever produced. The guidance is particularly important when using gasified appliances because of the risk from incomplete combustion and inadequate feeling. But most expects also apply when other energy sources are used. Let us now discuss the care and maintenance of kitchen equipment. Smart Care is an innovative program from Ecolab that is tailored for our critical kitchen equipment. Its goal is to keep food service kitchen equipment up and running. That is why we incorporate pre-scheduled maintenance, same-day repair service and a real-time asset management solution. The professional technicians can also help train kitchen staff on regular equipment cleaning procedures so it can maintain critical kitchen equipment properly and save time and money. Big benefits with smart care. Smart care is a true proactive and comprehensive approach to kitchen equipment care that helps. Reduce operational costs to improve energy efficiency and fewer breakdowns. Ensure food quality and safety by running equipment at peak performance. Simplify budget management over predictable equipment expenses. Maximize return on invested capital when we can make educated repair versus replacement decision with Unitrax SM Asset Management Solution. Experience the peace of mind that comes from keeping equipment up and running. Ecolab helps our customers increase equipment uptime, improve food safety, reduce operating costs, and maximize return on assets. Ecolab's Smart Care program is a total care approach to servicing critical kitchen equipment. This includes ice machines, refrigerators or coolers, fryers, grills, combi ovens, steamers, and more. Commonly used and critical parts are stocked on all Ecolab service vehicles for same-day emergency repairs. Ecolab's asset management solution includes SAP customer equipment profiles, the MyService online tracking portal, and Unitrax performance reporting. Ecolab provides easy-to-use and eco-friendly cleaning and sanitation products for your kitchen equipment. Ecolab also provides step-by-step -step equipment cleaning wall charts and can train kitchen staff on proper cleaning procedures. Ecolab's Total Care program is committed to servicing and protecting your mission-critical kitchen equipment. 
Now moving on to the next topic, we will now study the kitchen equipment specification. Standard. After determining the type and capacity of the equipment required for a particular kitchen, the next phase involves selecting the specific characteristics that are desired. Factors such as materials, construction, technique, special features, maintenance, consideration is evaluated. Stainless steel. Stainless steel is an alloy containing minimum amount of chromium and nickel and maximum amount of other alloying elements such as manganese, silicon and carbon. Its use in kitchen equipment is based on the following characteristic. High corrosion resistance, high strength, hardness, durability, abrasion resistance, ease of maintenance. Types Kitchen equipments manufacturers and fabricators select from the stainless steel referred to have type 304 and 302 food grade. These stainless steel sheets produced in India according to the standards of steel authority of India that controls the amount of alloying material. The corrosion resistance of stainless steel is attributed to the addition of chromium to the alloy. Nickel lowers the thermal conductivity of the alloy increases. It is so efficient of expansion, allowing it to be formed onto various shapes more easily. The amount of carbon is restricted so that the alloy can be welded without forming chromium carbide, which lowers corrosion resistance. Stainless steel is produced in sheets, plates, bars, wires, pipes and tubing. Construction standards. Equipment manufacturers to produce the finished products utilize several fastening methods. Fastening of materials in the food zone has to be capable of meeting sanitary requirements while non food zones. There are three fastening methods welding, soldering, mechanical fastener. Welding. Welding is the preferred method of joining sheets of metal that cannot be formed into the desired shapes. Heliarc welding is used on stainless steel if there is sufficient thickness of metal. The heliarc welding utilizes an inert gas as a flux resulting very smooth or strong weld. Heliarc welding is preferred for all kitchen equipment with food contact zone. Electric arc welding is as smooth or even as the heliarc welds. They may be used in non-food contact equipment. Acetylene welding may be necessary for thin metal sheets since the other two will burn through the metal easily. Soldering. Soldering is different from welding in that the metal to be joined are bounded rather than fussed together. 
soldered joints do not have the strength of welding joints and should be used appropriately in those applications that are not subjected to stress. Tin and lead are the basic soldiers used. The presence of these metals prevents their use on joints in food contact areas. If at all soldering has to be done in a food contact area in silver soldering may be done with 95% of tin, 5% silver but it is expensive. Mechanical fastener. The use of ball screws, rivets and studs are undesirable in the food zones of kitchen equipment for sanitary reason. They may be used only in non-food zone if other joining techniques are not practical. Low profile fasteners are preferred in order to facilitate cleaning of the area where the fasteners produce. Finish. A number of degrees of finishing are available for stainless steel. There are eight designated types of finished for stainless steel. They are achieved by standard, guiding, polishing and buffing. The finish used for surfaces that are in direct contact with food or expose is standard polish number four. Non-food contact surfaces and non-exposed supporting frames and sheets can have a duller finish which is less expensive than polish finish. Thickness. The Swiss wire gauge SWG usually designates metal thicknesses. Although other gauges are manufactured, typical gauge numbers of metals used for kitchen equipment ranges from 6 to 24. 6 is the thickest and 24 is the thinnest. Deep fat fryers. Deep fat fryers are available in a variety of types, capacities and degree of automatic operation design. The productive capacity of fryer is related to the liters of fat in the fryers, the heat input and the cooking time required for various foods. Typical design of fryers are based on a fat to food ratio 6 is to 1. This indicates that each kg of food to be fried requires 6 liters of oil or fat in the deep fat fryer. Conventional fryers are tailor made to the requirement of the client to various capacity half liter, 1 liter, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Pressure fryers make another category of deep fryers. They are sealed to permit steam pressure to build up between the lid and the fat surface. The steam is generated from the food fried by water injectors. The pressure fryer reduces the loss of moisture from foods. Heat transfer in a pressure fryer is greater than a conventional fryer and consequently the cooking time is shorter. The food is brown outside, moist and juicy on the inside. Griddle Griddle are flat top piece of equipment heated from beneath as compared to grills which have heating sources both above and beneath. Griddles are used for high production food service and fast food operation. Grills are more of a specialty piece of equipment. Both gas fired and electric models are suitable for most purposes. Griddles are available in variety of sizes from small that is 10 into 20 to as large as 72 into 24. Griddles are freestanding, counter-mounted, mobile or built in as the situation demands. The height of the splash guard location and the width of the grease through should be considered when specifying griddles. Combination griddle, grill is also available. This provides greater flexibility for the preparation of different menu items. Food cutters. Food cutters are versatile piece of equipment that can handle meats, vegetables and fruits. The food cutters can cut, dice, shred and almost liquefy food depending upon the amount of time the food is left in the cutter. The foods to be sized reduce are placed in a bowl which rotates and exposes them to high speed rotating blades. Both bench and floor models are available. Some cutter models are equipped with an attachment hub for accepting various attachments. Steam jacketed kettles. Steam jacketed kettles are constructed of two stainless steel balls seals, one within the other, with almost two of space between them for the introduction of steam. The amount of steam surface between the balls is referred to as jacketing, and models from half jacketed to full jacket are available. The operation of steam jacketed kettles utilizes steam which is condensed back to water in the jacket to provide the heat for the inner cattle. A condensed line is provided to remove the water that accumulates. The amount of heat input is dependent upon the pressure and amount of steam allowed to enter the jacketed area. 
there is a pressure gauge to indicate the pressure. In case of excess pressure is let into the jacket, there is a pressure or air release a valve to reduce the pressure. These kettles are used to cook rice, dal, boiled milk and cooked vegetables. They are available in 50, 100, 200 and 300 liters. Gas cooking range. Gas cooking ranges have open top burners with high pressure burners T22, T35. They are tailor made for the client's its requirement. They are manufactured in different combinations such as 2 in 1, 3 in 1, 4 in 1 and 6 in 1. The length and breadth of the range depends on the quantity of food to be prepared. In case of a la carta preparation, a combination of high and low pressure burners is used, the area being 14 into 40. The height of the cooking range is 33 to 34. But for ideal bulk cooking, the length varies from 20 to 34 per range and the height is reduced to 18 to 20. Heavy guard stainless steel and heavy duty supports are used for these cooking ranges since it involves a bulk preparation. A Chinese gas cooking range is aptly designed for authentic Chinese delicacies with a cast iron dome to prevent the direct heat onto the chef while cooking with a wok. A 12 to 14 height splash back with a swelling faucet with controls in front panel for immediate water and a drain channel. At the rear to enable the chef to empty the wastewater is also provided in this equipment. They are ideal with flat open top gas range in the middle for stock pot and dome cover gas ranges on either side for a la carta preparation. Dosa plate. The dosa plate is similar to the griddle which has hot plates specially designed to prepare dosas. The plate is thick machine polish mild steel with even heat distribution for optimum use. The MS plate rests on stainless steel frame and it has SS top front and especially place all spill edge through. The splash bag on all three sides of the dosa plate to avoid splash of oil or batter. For uniform heat distribution, a V-shaped burner is placed. This unit is available in electric or gas. It is custom built size to prepare a minimum 2 to 3 dosas to 8 to 10 dosas at a time. Italy steamer. Italy steamers are SS cabinets with tight fitting doors with gassets. Steam is injected into the cabinet to preheat to the required temperature. Italy plates are made of SS or alum with different combination. The steam is injected from the sides, top and bottom. These cabinets are tailor made to accommodate two, four, six Italy plates at a time. It is advisable to have two plate compartments because steam is lost during the process of loading the Italy plates. Let us now discuss about food storage. Proper food storage helps to preserve the quality and nutritional value of the foods purchased and also help make the most of food dollar by preventing spoilage. Additionally, proper food storage can help prevent foodborne illness caused by harmful bacteria. Use fresh, perishable foods soon after they are harvested or purchased. Signs of spoilage that make a food unpalatable but not a bacterial hazard are the rancid odor, flavor of fats caused by oxidation, slime on the surface of meat and the fermentation of fruit juices due to yeast growth. Of odors in foods and a sour taste in bland foods can indicate dangerous bacterial spoilage. However, food can be high in bacteria count even without such signals. Food service operators all over the world believe deeply in the value of Cambro products, not only to help make their jobs easier every day, but to help them store, deliver, and serve food safely to their customers. Often overlooked, but a key component for maintaining a safe food environment is the labeling of all food storage items. Food service operators should focus on these five labeling practices to enhance their food safety efforts. The first in, first out food rotation process is a key step to ensure that food is properly rotated during storage. When prepping ingredients, the ability to easily identify menu ingredients is crucial to preparing properly and saving valuable time and resources. Identifying the right product minimizes handling and improves food safety. 
cover, label, and date all food storage containers using dissolvable labels. Sticky label residue from masking tape and non-dissolving labels on storage containers can harbor harmful bacteria. Commercial grade round and square storage containers should have easy to read printed graduations that promote easy inventory management. Labeling foods properly helps with food safety practices as well as providing tremendous cost savings due to less food waste. Proper food storage labeling practices will improve food safety, bolster kitchen efficiency, and provide substantial cost savings to food. food storage. To retain quality and nutritive value, stock only the kinds and amounts of food it can store properly. Proper storage means maintaining a clean refrigerator and freezer. Avoid overcrowding the refrigerator. Arrange items so cold air can circulate freely. To reduce dehydration and quality loss, use freezer wrap, freezer quality plastic bags or aluminum foil over commercial wrap on meat and poultry that will be stored in the freezer for more than two months. Let us now discuss some of the roles of a storekeeper. A storekeeper is more than just the face of the store. While a friendly storekeeper maintains a good clientele, she must also be business savvy using math and critical thinking skills to tally sales, report expenditures and quickly tabulate a customer's purchases within an applied discount, for example. The storekeeper must be knowledgeable about the products she sells, understand the business she's in and appear approachable with employees and customers alike. Maintains records knowing what inventory the store has, when stock is running low and which items customers request is the stock keeper's responsibility. She keeps detailed inventory records when products are purchased and return notes customers' opinions and arranges for store transfers, complies a customer mailing list with sale alerts and coupons and files and updates employee documents as necessary. These records must be tidy and organized for others to understand. Create and receive orders. The storekeeper keeps detailed records so she knows when to reorder supplies or merchandise. She uses her math and computer skills to generate orders and communicates with sales representations on sizes, fabrics and delivery times, for example. When merchandise arrives, it is her responsibility to unpack shipments, assess the inventory, delegate employees to stock the shelves and send back defective or wrong merchandise in a timely manner. Keep appearances up. The overall image of the store is a storekeeper's responsibility. She keeps shelf dust free, spaces clothes and merchandise appropriately, styles and updates the mannequins when necessary and ensures merchandise labels all face the same way, for example. In addition, the storekeeper is aware of lighting issues such as bulbs that need replacing or cracked tiles in the bathroom needing repair. She also ensures the store is hazard-free with ample working room and that employees follow business and employee state laws. Communicates well because the storekeeper juggles the needs of customers, vendors, sales reps and employees and possibly the store's owner. She must have excellent communication skills. She is responsible for problem solving explaining products, answering questions about company policies, and training and giving employee feedback. Good listening and interpersonal skills and intuitive nature and the ability to make quick spot-on assessments are important for the successful storekeeper. These can be briefly set out as follows. To exercise general control over all activities in stores, department to ensure safekeeping both as to quality and quantity of materials to maintain proper records to initiate purchase requisition for the replacement of stock of all regular stores items whenever the stock level of any item of store approaches minimum limit fixed in respect thereof to initiate action for stock page or further purchasing when the stock level approaches the maximum limit to check and receive purchase materials forwarded by the receiving department and to arrange for the storage in appropriate places. To reserve a particular material for a specific job when so required. To issue materials only in required quantities against authorized requisition, notes or material lists. To check the book balances with the actual physical stock at frequent intervals by way of internal control over wrong issues, pilferage, etc.
Hello welcome to the donut stuff place thing what the heck do you want? Um I'd like a. Oh my gosh could you please hurry up? I would like a. Tell me what you want or I will go all ninja and jump over this counter and kick you and stuff. Can I get a? Okay, really, you are wasting my time please place an order or I will be very angry. Um, how big is a donut? It a donut, you idiot. Please, just tell me what you want and I'll get it for you. How many donuts are in a dozen? Oh my goodness are you kidding me? You don't know what a dozen is how nice. Or maybe. Oh, now you are changing your mind. Why don't you just stop talking and order something already? HM, what kind of chocolate do you have? It's chocolate, you idiot. How many kinds of chocolate are there? Okay, I know what I want, but can you take off the chocolate and the sprinkles and jelly? I'm allergic. Yeah, like I'm going to destroy a donut just for your special knee. I would like a small hot chocolate and two donuts, please. Oh, like you actually need to. Let us now discuss our next topic, beverage storage facilities. The ability to efficiently receive, store and retrieve goods in a food and beverage storage facility is one of the key ways to reduce costs and stay ahead of competition. In today's competitive market, food and beverage companies across the globe are in a race to get product from production to the shelf faster and cheaper to meet customer demands. Manual processes, insufficient storage of product, cycle counting and costly shipping mistakes increase the probability of inventory inaccuracies, lowest throughput and can lead to poor inventory storage planning. These represent areas where productivity is lost along with potential profits. Companies in the food and beverage industry can improve productivity up to 40%, achieve up to 70% in cost reduction with automated inventory data collection, improve inventory accuracy, driver productivity, overall throughput of facilities and reduce cycle counting of foods, view real-time data of inventory location, quantities and expiry dates, reduce costs associated with missed shipments and product spoilage, operate more safely with equipment monitoring and impact detection, import accurate data into existing WMS and LMS system. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Exposed edges on kitchen equipments are formed to provide safe and sanitary condition. Food and beverage companies across the globe are in a race to get product from production to the self faster and cheaper to meet customer demands. The health and safety in catering contact committee considers the lack of adequate kitchen ventilation to be a major problem in catering. The hood helps capture the pollutants such as moisture and grease before they disperse in the air in the kitchen. The leadership provides information a caterer will need to access whether existing ventilation and insulation are adequate, as well as guiding caterers and building advisors on management as well as design and performance issues specific to catering.